Okay, everybody, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome to Cassandra Summit. I hope you enjoyed the keynotes. Um, and I'm going to be talking about uh, something that a lot of people are talking about these days, uh, retrieval, augmented generation, um, AI, and how to use Bedrock with Astra to create a question and answer um, session. So this is me. Um, I'm a developer advocate at Datastax, Kirsten Hunter. Um, I wrote a book called Irresistible APIs. I'm very much about the developer experience, making sure that there's no speed bumps when you get started on technology um, until you actually get to where you want to get. So what will this talk cover? Um, I'm going to use uh, Romeo and Juliet as um, scene... Uh, act five, 5, Scene 3, which is where all the dying happens. Um, and we're going to load that into our, our uh, vector database, and then we're going to ask questions using prompt engineering. And I'm going to do this in a very easy way with Amazon Bedrock. Um, you will notice that I have Romeo and Astra instead of Romeo and Juliet, and that is because when you take one of the um, LLM models, it, it will cheat. Um, if you say, only use the documents that I have, how did, it, how did Juliet die? It'll cheat. It'll look at the uh, huge um, upload that it had from the web, and it'll give you the answer based on that. So I changed her name to Astra because Romeo and Astra is not a thing. It has to use the documents that I'm giving it. Um, I'll talk a little bit about um, Amazon Bedrock, um, which is how we're using, um, we're, we're creating the embeddings and the completions. Um, I'll talk a little bit about Datastax Astra, which is a, um, a vector database. It's, it's, it is Cassandra. We have actually introduced vector search to the database. Um, that's going to be in Cassandra 5. Right now it's just in Astra, but we're pushing it to the core so that you'll be able to use that going forward with your Cassandra instances. We'll talk a little bit about how a vector database works so that we understand that. Um, I'll go over the process of the demo and then we'll just do the demo. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna use a Jupyter notebook and walk through the steps necessary to upload that information with the embeddings, um, create a query embedding, and then run it through LLM for a nice result. So I mentioned what the demo is. Again, we have Romeo and Juliet, except we're using Romeo and Astra. What we're building is a sample RAG application to demonstrate the process. Uploading the documents using embeddings. Um, we're using the Titan embeddings from Amazon. Um, create a query using the same Titan embedding. Um, retrieve the similar documents and then use a prompt to clean up that answer and turn it into natural language. So Astra, Astra is a real-time vector database. Um, it's not just a vector database. It is a fully-fledged Cassandra database that also knows how to do vector search. So you can put all of your stuff in there, not just your vector stuff, and it can all be uh, maintained in the same database. Um, one of the things that is important is that it indexes in real time. So um, one of our competitors, um, the, uh, the queries slow down significantly when it's in the process of indexing, and it has to go sort of offline a little bit for indexing, and so that makes things slow. Um, Astra does everything in real time. The reads and writes are real time, and so um, you get that response, responsiveness even when it's in the process of doing indexing. So how does a vector database work? How many of you are familiar with how vector databases work? Okay. So um, we create a vector store, and the vector store allows you to have documents, and basically uh, the embedding is, is like an address in space. Like where, where does this document live in my, in my document space? Right? And so it's a very complicated address. Um, if you're using OpenAI, for instance, it's 1,376 dimensions. So um, it's a very precise address in your, in your um, place. And, and uh, so that's, that's what you do. You create the vector store. You populate it with those documents and those embeddings. And then when you have a query, you send the query through the same embedding to find out what its address is. And then it goes into the database 
and figures out what's near it. Right, so we're talking, this is much closer to semantic search than the, the searches that we normally do on databases, which have very specific keys and, 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 and value pairs. Um, so it's pretty sexy. I mean, I've loved semantic search forever. Okay, so Amazon Bedrock is a managed service for AI foundation models. There are tons of AI foundation models, more coming all the time. What Bedrock does is it lets you sort of use their interface to use those models. So you don't have to go set up those models separately. You set up your Bedrock and then you choose the model that you want to use. Um, this example, we're doing Amazon Titan embeddings and the Anthropic Claude 2 model as the LLM. Um, this, it, models can be changed and switched out as needed and that's really important. Because when I first did this, I used one of the other completion engines, um, dif different than the one that we chose to use, the Claude one. And I said, in 20 to 50 words, tell me how Juliet died in Romeo and Juliet. And it said, stabbed. <laughs> okay. That wasn't 20 to 50 words. You know, prompt engineering is really tough. But if I use OpenAI, it says, oh, well, she took a potion to make her look dead, and then Romeo came and thought she was dead, and so he killed himself, and then, um, and then she woke up and stabbed herself, right? That's a good answer, right? But um, different models behave differently. Okay, so the steps that we're going to follow the, for the demo... Um, I'm going to set up my Python environment. We're just going to go through a, a simple Jupyter notebook for this. So I'm going to set up the Python environment, the credentials, and everything that I need. I'm going to create a vector store in Astra. I'm going to create an embedding for the query to retrieve similar documents and pass it through the LLM. This will all make sense when we look at the notebook. But for now, does anybody have any questions on kind of the vector store stuff um, and how it works? No. Okay. Um, so let, let me look. Uh, let me show you this sort of with pictures. So this is retrieval augmented generation, um, and so we give it the context, with the tasks, uh, the roles and the persona, and the constraints. Um, so we have our data on the left hand side, and we split it into documents, and then the documents go through the embeddings API, and then they get put into the vector database, and then the prompt goes through the sentence to the same embeddings API to create that embedding so that it can tell the vector store, I want things that are similar to this. Um, and then um, it sends out the, the documents for you. And then when you're doing RAG, you take those documents and that, what we'll do is we're going to um, take the documents we get back and then have the LLM massage it until it, it gives you uh, a good answer. Can we use the word space and dimension interchangeably? I'm sorry, what? The word space and dimension, can that be used interchangeably? Um, the dimension is kind of the address and the space is kind of the, the, the whole thing. All right, so I have a demo. And of course, there are demo demons. So if it doesn't work, then I'm going to put this in the chat for the talk so you guys can play with it too. OK, so I'm going to set up my Python environment. And I'm installing um, what's really important here is CASIO. That is our um, library for using um, Langchain, um, Lala Index, um, OpenAI. We've, we've actually made it uh, work for all of those things. And it's just going to take some time because I'm standing up here and you all can watch it. <laughs> I'm going to say that this is not the fastest internet I've ever encountered. So we're using, um, so you see we have Casio and Langchain, um, Casio. Um, we have Butto3 and Butto Core. Um, those are the ways to interface with the AWS system. Um, and then there's a few things that are necessary for the particular example that we're showing. And this should be done 
any moment now. So what you get for doing a live demo. Okay, still working. The nice thing about this is that you can ask all sorts of different questions about Romeo and Astra. And you can see here, um, with the Lang chain embeddings, we're importing at bedrock embeddings. That's how we're going to access the embeddings that we want to use. So we're basically using Lang chain as a um, adapter to um, to bedrock. Um, Lang chain is just a really fantastic way to um, get the the models that you want to use and use them. All right, let's done. You okay? This is a tricky one. Yes, that's right. I send it to myself in Slack. Okay, and then Astro CS. So this is the token that you need for using Astra. And the other piece of information is the DBID because you might have a different, uh, some different databases and they might be named the same, which is something that we want to not encourage, but um, this way you're using the actual ID for the database. Okay. Well, moment of truth. <sighs> okay. I may just have to talk you through what it's going to do if it's not happy with my token. Thank you all for your patience. Oh, that's better. Okay, so those warnings are known. Um, there are some things in the back end. Cassio is going to get rid of them very shortly, but we are successful. So now I need to do my AWS ID. I never do easy demos. Probably should have set this up ahead of time, but I wanted to be honest about what is required. And this is actually out there. You can play with it um, yourself as well. Session token. Session token is really the reason why I can't set this up ahead of time, because uh, it it refreshes like every half hour. All right, let's see if we succeeded at that. So um, what I'm doing here is I'm setting up the bedrock runtime. And then I'm using the embeddings, and this is where I'm setting the model that I have. So I can do any of the models that they have for Redrock right there. Um, I can switch them out. I can change them. It's it's all it's all really easy. Okay, so I've just created a vector store named Shakespeare Act Five, 
I'm going to grab the document that has the lines from, uh, from that particular act and scene. And then we're going to go ahead and it's going to take a couple minutes to add the 321 documents. So there's 321 lines. So what I've broken, I've broken the play down into lines. Each line is its own document. Um, and then it has the embedding. So um, it's just basic Python that we're, that we're doing here to add this. And it's going to say done in just a moment. But let's go ahead and look at the prompt while we're waiting. So we're telling it, um, ooh. as a human, use the following pieces of context to provide a concise answer to the question at the end. If you don't know the answer, just say that you don't know. Don't try to make up an answer. That last part is almost always what you want if you're doing retrieval on committed generation, because you do not want it to take the whole internet as of three years ago and give you give the answer based on that. You want it to give the answer based on the documents that you put in. Okay, so we did the prompt. Um, and so we're using Anthropic um, Claude. Um, it, it actually behaves much better than the Titan um, completion for our purposes. Right, so you may find out that actually Titan works great for what you want to do, but for what we wanted to do, we ended up liking Claude better. And then um, this is how we're going to answer the question. We're going to create an embedding. We're going to stick it in there um, and then um, by evoking the model, and then we're going to give the answer. So let's see what we get. Have to go. That one's done. Excellent. Okay, so what do we get? Based on the provided context, it seems that Astor, Tybalt, and Romeo all die in the story. True. Specifically, the lines mentioned that Astro was found dead and bleeding. Tybalt had an untimely death. death. Romeo, Romeo was also found dead. Um, so, so that's a pretty good answer, right? Who died in the play? And this one shows you, these are the lines that it, that it, that it found. Uh, there's duplicates because um, I didn't clear out the database before I did it this time, so we got some duplicates. But it takes the 15 lines that it got that were in the region of who died in the play. And um, so it, it, it did the correct, the correct thing. So um, does anybody have any questions about how this all works? So I have an Astra database um, that's running, and that's what I used the, the credentials to get. I also have AWS access to using Bedrock. That This is new. It's something that you probably have to add to your roles in AWS in order to make it work correctly. Um, I would love it if people played with this. Um, I will put a link to it in the, uh, in the session notes. and. Um, I, you're welcome to give me feedback on it if it works for you, if it doesn't work for you, if you have questions about how to ask kind of different answers. Yes? I'm sorry, what? So Cassandra 5.0, which is in beta, um, you can actually get a, a, tar, a, a Docker image of Cassandra 5, and it has this vector search in it and it will work. Um, in fact, we, uh, the CASIO that I was talking about, let me show you um, the website. So CASIO is designed to integrate Cassandra with Langchain, with Llama Index, with OpenAI, with all of the different 
Um, it's designed to be um, flexible so we can continue to add more providers. And, um, and there are paths in here where you can say, I'm using Astra or I'm using Cassandra. And it will tell you how to make it work with Cassandra. So, um, and then you can be able to do all this stuff. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right. Stefano um, is amazing. It's tomorrow afternoon, um, and he's going to talk about Cassio and how it works. Um, this is just what I have here is just one example of how how it works. But he's going to talk about um, the the whole um, infrastructure that he's created around um, Cassandra and uh, AI. It's it's really really amazing. So definitely go listen to Stefano tomorrow. Okay, well, I'm done. So, oh, more questions, yes. So where is uh, AstraDB located here? It's, 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 a, it's a SaaS. It's a SaaS? Yeah. Then you have Bedrock, which is also on AWS, so it's a SaaS as well. Right. Then you have Colab, obviously, which is another SaaS. Uh, right, you don't need Colab, right? You, you, could run, Colab, you can run the Jupyter yeah. Notebooks locally. But I'm trying to see, uh, like, in terms of the latency, I know you... I may have a different setup, right? But if I'm on AWS, for example, to go to AstraDB, am I going somewhere in AWS or am I going to some other cloud? So that's a great, great question. Um, Astra actually uh, has a backend, and the backend, you, you get to choose whether it's AWS, what region it is, GCP, or Azure. Um, a lot of people choose to have two different um, different regions from different providers so that if Amazon has one of those catastrophic things that happens every now and then, um, you're still up and running um, with, on GCP or whatever. Um, so um, I don't know wh which part of, of AWS you're thinking would be moving, but... Well, I'm just thinking in terms of latency and uh, using a lot of SaaS services, some of them provided by AWS, of course, and I know they're Yes, but if it's provided by a third party like like uh, like you, right, or even some other right. application that is complex, you have a lot of third parties, and you may you you want to take into consideration what's happening with with the latency of our price, right? Yeah, uh, Astra um, as. Uh, I have been told, um, and I haven't done the testing myself, but we've done testing with Astra against other databases, and we are very performant. Um, there's not a lot of latency. Um, so um, using the bedrock, you'll get you probably get a little bit of latency because you're working with the two different systems. But um, but I haven't had bedrock be um, slow me down noticeably. And that's, I think I saw you mentioned about the fact that Cassandra five, yes, which is coming out, yes. Uh, I guess it would be a Docker image or something like this. It's, you Docker can image. get a Docker image now of the of the five point oh beta. I can potentially run it in my Kubernetes cluster on EKS on AWS. Yes. Uh, so what would be the advantage of using Astra DB SaaS? Um, well, so Cassandra is is amazing and wonderful, and and um, I love it, but it's a pain to manage. Um, it does some amazing things with scalability, and 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 Astra takes care of most of that for you. Um, so you're not spending your time um, managing Cassandra. Um, so the other thing that's that that um, that we've just added that might be interesting to people who are not excited about using CQL is we have a new um, we're calling it the JSON API, and it is very similar to Mongo's interface. Um, so if you're com comfortable with Mongoose, for instance, you can drop this in and use us as the back end instead. And um, it's, it's much more friendly for people who like live in front end JavaScript land to, um, to hit a, you know, a document database is very um, common use case. Uh, and I saw here, you don't demonstrate it too much in this uh, notebook. Right. But what are the benefits of uh, AstraDB versus other, other uh, vector databases, right? I think you talked about this briefly at the beginning. Yeah, I, I, uh, so we did uh, some, some 
basically, Astra is a Cassandra database, and it has all the things that the Cassandra database brings with it, which is performance and reliability and uptime and, and, and you know, fast, fast, fast queries. Um, and then we have vector search on top of that. It's part of that. It's not like an extra thing that we stuck on. There's a lot of companies that are just a vector database, and they're not really in a position to scale in the same way for a production um, system. And we did a lot of uh, testing. I think if you go by our booth, we have the, the numbers, but um, we were like 18 times faster in some cases and, and uh, four times faster in other cases. Um, and we have really got the performance that you want if you're gonna have a vector database. So it seems to be an operational play, and uh, I guess replication also, uh, Cassandra is much better than maybe the alternative. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So uh, if I have the regular uh, production database, can it coexist with the vector? Yes. Yeah, you can make vector tables and they can coexist with non-vector tables. You, you can. Um, the Astra wouldn't, yes. What was the question? Oh, the question was, um, if I have production database, data in Astra and then I want to add vector search, will those, can those coexist? And so what I said was, you can have tables that have vectors and tables that don't have vectors, but Astra's not gonna bring them together for you. You're gonna need to do that on the client side. No. Yes? You can actually just uh, alter a table in Cassandra and add a vector type. Nice. A column that's a vector type, and uh, you awesome. have to add awesome. the embeddings, you have to add the, uh, the data to that. Right. And in your database, you can have multiple tables, right? And so if you have a table that doesn't need vector, then you don't need to add vector. But like she said, if you want to add vector search to a particular table, then we can do that. Yes. Is there a slide in your deck that has uh, both topology diagrams that you could follow it visually? Um, there, was, there was one. Uh, this one? And I will put my slides up. Um, I didn't make the deadline, I'm very sorry, but I'll put them up. So if you check later today, uh, you should be able to get my slides, yes. Um, RAG is really kind of tricky. Um, you aren't gonna get the same answer from the same model every time, even if you give it the same data that that's just the way the LLMs kind of work. I mean, I've, I asked it the same question five times and it gave me five similar but different answers. So um, that LLM piece at the completion level um, is gonna, it's gonna make matter a lot um, how you set, set up your prompt, right? That's gonna be different based on the model that you have. And also you can set things as such as temperature um, where it t you tell it to, be bounded in what it returns. There's a parameter for randomness in the ah. So I I have to I have to wrap up. It's it's eleven. Time for the next talk. Um, but um, please feel free to contact me um, and ask if you have questions or um, if you play with the notebook and see how it works. That would be great. Um, and I really appreciate all of you coming. So thanks so much.